Hello children, I hope you all are happy and healthy. Today, we'll be discussing chapter 22, The World in My Home. So tell me children, do you all like stories? Yes, what if I tell you that this chapter has not just one but six different stories. Each story will give you an important message to remember throughout your life. Are you all ready? Let's begin this journey of interesting stories. Can you tell me what a home is? Yes, home is where you live with your family. Who all are there in your home? Your parents, grandparents, your siblings and you. Now children, what do you mean by the sentence, the world in my home? It means that there are different kinds of people in this world. Similarly, in and around your home, you can see different kinds of people. So today, we'll see how these people think and behave differently. Let's begin with the first story. Marita's family sits in front of the TV with everyone wanting to watch a different program. Marita's brother likes to watch cricket, but little Susan, she likes to listen to songs. Marita's mother wants to watch news, but her aunt likes TV serials. Her father loves to watch football and Marita herself likes to watch cartoons. So tell me children, who won over the TV remote? Yes, her father won and everyone ended up watching football together. Now tell me children, does your family fight for the TV remote in your house? When all your family members want to watch a different program, would you fight with each other for the remote? Or would you take turns to watch your favorite shows one after the other? Or does one person decide to watch a show and everyone angrily agrees to watch the same thing? You can pause the video to answer the questions. So what do you all learn from this story? Every person has a different liking and it is completely okay. You must neither fight with anyone for your gain nor should you always agree to what others say. As a family, you must enjoy spending time together and give everyone a chance to watch what they like. Do you all agree with me? Will you do this from today? I think yes. Shall we move to the second story? One day, Pratibha went to her friend's house. On her way back home, when the clock struck seven, she saw her brothers, Sandeep and Sanjay, playing outside happily. She wondered why only she was asked to come back home early. Why didn't the same rules apply to her brothers? So children, tell me. Why were there different rules for her and her brothers? What do you all think? Do boys and girls have different rules when it comes to staying out late? If yes, what is the reason behind it? Is it the right thing to do? You can pause the video to answer the questions. Small children are always asked to come back home early after playing. But as you grow up, girls are asked to come back home before 7 p.m. at night, whereas boys have the freedom to stay out until late. So what do you all think, children? Is it fair to have different rules for boys and girls? It is not. Boys and girls must have the same rules and the society must treat boys and girls as equal. I hope you all agree with me. 
children are you all ready for the third story one day pillow auntie took phali nazu and their other friends to the beach and then to the fair have you all been to the fair what do you find there giant wheel popcorn ice kulfi and what not so the seven of them ate ice kulfi and then pillow auntie asked the kulfi seller how much did it cost the kulfi seller made a mistake and told the cost of only 5 kulfis the children were happy that they saved the money of 2 kulfis but pillow auntie paid for all 7 kulfis do you agree with what she did or should she have kept quiet and paid only for 5 kulfis what would you have done Is there someone in your family like Pillu auntie? What do you learn from the story? You can pause the video to answer the questions. This story teaches us to be truthful. The kulfi seller works hard all day and sells kulfis. It is not fair to take away the money that he deserves. Even if he makes any calculating mistake, you must not pay him less. So, what do we learn? That you must give someone what they deserve. Will you do this if the same happens with you? I'm sure you will. Let us move on to the fourth story. Akshay lives with his grandmother and loves her dearly she loves him too akshay has a friend named anil she likes anil but has told akshay not to eat or drink anything in anil's house because they are different from us so one day there was a volleyball match near anil's house and he invited everyone home to drink water anil gave akshay water but he was hesitant to drink you know why because akshay remembered that his grandmother told him not to eat or drink anything in anil's house because they are different from us what do you think akshay should do Why did his grandmother say that Anil's family is different from them? How do you think they were different? Has your family ever told you something like this? Did you listen to them? You can pause the video to answer the questions. This story talks about an old system where some set of people are considered to be of lower class. Elders say that we must not eat or drink anything in their house. Is it right to do so? No, it's not. All are humans and people must not be treated in this way. You must be kind to those who are kind to you. We must love accept and respect people for who they are imagine children what if the same thing happened with you would you like it think about it just two more stories to go are you ready for the fifth story dondu lives in a village with his joint family his father's elder brother takes care of the property and the family one day Dondu gets an idea to do something different which would also bring some extra money to the family. He gets an idea of buying a grinding machine. Grinding machine is also known as chakki. It is used to make powder from the seeds. Earlier the grinding machine was run manually. Nowadays people use the machine coming back to our story this grinding machine was a little expensive so dondu thought of taking a loan from the bank he asked his father and he agreed for it 
but Dhondu's uncle said no to it. Have you ever thought of an idea and been stopped by any elder? Why do you think that they always make decisions for the whole family? Should Dhondu's uncle always take the decision for the whole family? What would you have done if you were in Dhondu's place? You can pause the video to answer the questions. Elders have more experience than us and always wish the best for us. But does that mean that they should always make decisions for us? As you grow up, you should start deciding for yourself. It is okay if you make mistakes because you learn from your mistakes. Take everyone's opinion, decide what makes more sense to you and go ahead with it. Remember children that they always take decisions that is best for you. Are you all ready for the sixth and the final story? Ritu and Meena were friends. One day they were playing hopscotch in the evening. Children, do you know what hopscotch is? It is a game where you draw boxes on the floor with numbers in it. You throw a stone across it and jump through the boxes. So, coming back to the story, one day after playing hopscotch together, Meena tells Ritu to come with her to her house. Ritu asks, does your uncle stay at your home? If he is there, I shall not come. But Meena asked her the reason behind the dislike. She also says that her uncle would give them loads of chocolate if they went home together. Ritu says that she is scared of Meena's uncle and does not like it when he touches her hand. Why do you think Ritu felt scared of Meena's uncle? What would you have done in the same situation? Have you ever felt the same in your daily life? Have you spoken to someone about it? You can pause the video to answer the questions. Children, this is a very important lesson. Ritu likes to hold Meena's hand but does not like it when Meena's uncle touches her hand. What does this mean? That there are two types of touches, good touch and bad touch. If someone holds your hand to cross the road or pats your back to appreciate you, it's a good touch. Whereas if someone holds your hand and presses it or touches you in a different way that makes you feel uncomfortable, it is a bad touch. Remember children, no matter who the person is or how close they are to you, if they behave with you in a way that you do not like or makes you uncomfortable, immediately say no to it. So children, was this an interesting chapter? Did you learn something today? How many morals did you learn in this chapter? List them with me. 1. Do not fight with your family for TV remote, fan, food, etc. You must enjoy spending time with them and sharing with each other. 2. The rules are there only to protect us. We must be really careful and aware of our surroundings to take care of ourselves. Girls are asked to return home early just because they are at a higher risk of facing danger than boys. 3. Never cheat anyone or break their trust. Always be truthful. When a person works hard, we must give the reward that they deserve and not reduce it in any way. 4. We shouldn't treat people differently just because of their appearance or their family background. Everyone deserves love and respect. A person must be recognized for his hard work, nature and behavior towards other people. 5. Elders advise us because they want the best for us, 
most of the time. But unless you make decisions and commit mistakes, you don't learn enough. So if you feel that your idea could help you and the people around you, you must go ahead. Lastly, always recognize good touch and bad touch. Stay away from people who make you feel scared or uncomfortable and inform your parents or teachers about it. Children, I hope you all enjoyed the chapter. Thank you and we'll meet in the next session.